this video is about creating classes in C++. Um, so the first thing you need to know is that a class is basically a model for some sort of object um, where we define data, which would be in the form of its variables, and we define behaviors, which would be in um, the form of its methods or functions. So let's say we want to model um, a something like a piranha plant from classic Mario. Um, we're going to make this really simplified for the purpose of this example, but um, we, we have to come up with the idea of what we're modeling. So my object that I'm modeling here is a piranha plant. Um, and then we want to know, um, well, what are its, its properties or its, uh, you know, its fields, its values? So um, the data that it's going to hold, let's say our two pieces of data will be uh, the color of the top of the plant and um, the, the state of safety that is currently being represented to um, the hero. So if this plant's up, it is not safe. And if the plant is down, it is safe. So let's call it uh, safety. So actually, it's just happens just safe. So that would either be like a true or a false value. True, it is safe. False, it's not. Okay. Um, so that's really simple. Um, and then we need to come up with what are its behaviors. So let's say that a plant is able to rise, it's able to lower, and um, we have to have this one extra special um, method to actually cause our class to be created. And um, its whole purpose is to give these two guys starting values. And the special method is what's called a constructor. Okay. So now I've got um, my list of basically variables um, and if I plan this out, so this guy is probably going to be a string. This guy is going to be a true or false, so a Boolean variable. Um, these guys, we're just going to have them toggle the safety state and maybe print a little picture that shows uh, something similar to this, whether the plan is up or down. And then um, this thing it will set these two things starting values. So I'm going to go over to Visual Studio now and start implementing this thing. So when you make your own class in Visual Studio, you're actually going to have um, two files that define the class itself, and then you will have a main that you use to test the class or classes if you had more than one. Um, and that main is usually called a driver because it drives the action. So my first file I'm going to make is actually a totally new kind. Um, we haven't made this before. It's a header file, and guess what? It goes in the header files folder. So I'm going to right-click here and add a new item. And it's going to be a .h file. And I am going to name it um, the name of the class that I'm making. So I'm calling this Piranha. OK. Let's add that. And then the second file that's going to be associated with the class is going to be a CPP file. It's going to have the same name as this .h file. And I'm going to put that in the source files folder. So let me go ahead and create that. So this is going to be a CPP file called Piranha. Okay, and then I know that I'm going to want a main to actually test this, so I'm going to go ahead and add that in the source files folder as well, and I'm just going to call that driver, that's what the thing is. Okay, so I've got all this created, um, and I'm going to start in my .h file. Um, in a class definition, my header file is really like kind of like a listing of all the things that the class has or owns. Um, it's not the actual implementation of them. And you'll see it sort of looks like a struct because really a class is kind of like a fancied up struct where you have um, the component fields or variables, but you also have functions that you define. So I'm going to start out and I'm going to move some stuff around as I do this um, by saying this thing that I'm making is class piranha. Okay. And um, I have some curlies and I'm going to define some stuff inside here. So I need to make my variables. So again, those were going to be a uh, string for color and a Boolean value for safety status. So let's make a string for color and a Boolean variable called safe. And already you see some complaining is happening. Well, if I want to use strings, guess what? I need my string library. So I'm just going to go up here and include it. Okay, and um, it's still complaining. What a surprise! And so, since I'm working in Microsoft Visual Studio, my namespace is standard in here. And there we go. We fixed it. Okay. So these are my variables. 
Um, now I need a list of my functions. And so this list of my functions is almost like when you prototype functions above main. I'm just providing the tops of them um, in my list here so that I have a list of what's available. So I've got a function called rise, a function called lower, and the constructor. Um, we have to define the constructor first. So let's do that. And this is this is weird, but a constructor is a very special kind of method, and all it doesn't it doesn't have a return type. So um, the way that I can tell it's the constructor is it literally just has the same name as the class. So this guy is my constructor, and we will use it to set starting values again of these two guys later. Okay. Then I'm gonna have rise, and I'm just gonna print some stuff in it, so it's just gonna be a void function. And I'm gonna have lower. Okay, so I've got <clears throat> these guys. I know that I'm going to want to print some stuff out in this and this later. And just so that I don't have to include it there, I'm going to go ahead and include uh, IO stream right here. Um, and that'll take care of these guys when I get actually get to the implementation. And now there's just one other little thing that I do um, when I define a class, and that's I don't want just any function out in my driver to be able to get to these two variables and change them. I only want my own functions right here inside my class to be able to edit these guys. And to make that that true, to make these, these guys safe and protected from any other functions, I'm going to mark them private. And that means that only functions that are inside the same class will be able to access these at all, okay? Now, I do want to be able to call functions out in my driver associated with my piranha plants, so I'm going to mark these guys public, which means that they can be called outside of the class, okay? And then I just have one little... Um, thing left to do and that's I want to make sure that if I make a really complicated program and I have already included a piranha plant somewhere earlier and I try to include it again I don't duplicate it so there's some little preprocessor directives that take care of that for me and they look like this so I'm gonna say if and def which means if not defined and here I'm putting piranha and by convention, um, we put the name of the class in all caps. So I'm saying if this thing isn't already defined by it being included somewhere else in my code, then I want to define it now. So I put define prana. So um, if this thing doesn't already exist from earlier in my pro code, then I will define it now. And then I just have to go to the very bottom and close off the if with an end if. And now, if I accidentally include this twice, um, nothing will get duplicated or ruined. Okay, So that's my .h file. You'll see it doesn't have any actions coded in it. It's basically just a list of stuff. So now my next step is to go and code um, these three functions. So I'm going to go into my piranha.cpp, or my implementation file, and I'm going to start coding them. Well, the first thing I need to do is I need to include this file because it has my prototypes in it. So I will include, and this is a local file, not something that's installed with Visual Studio. So I'm going to use quotes to get it. And it should, if everything's going right, be offered to me. If it's not, you can just type it in. Um, so now I've sort of joined these two files together. Let me go back and save this guy, actually. And I want to code these three things. So I'm going to copy them so that I don't have to retype those words. And I'm going to delete semicolons, let's get rid of this for a minute. Okay, so my constructor is supposed to give a starting value to my two values here. So let's just make the default color be red and the default safety state be uh, let's see, true or false. So let's make it be down when we start, so it's true. Okay, You see I'm already getting a bunch of complaining and it's telling me um, it doesn't know what this stuff is. So there's this weird little extra thing you have to do when you implement the functions from a class. And it's, um, it's called applying a scope resolution operator. I need to tell this function it belongs to the Piranha class. So here's what I do. I go in front of it and I write the class name and then two colons. So now this function knows that it belongs to this class. OK. 
Okay. And I'm going to have to do that for these guys. Um, the constructor doesn't have a return type, so it's really easy to figure out where to put that. With all other functions, it gets placed after the return type. So I'll just insert that right there and insert it right here. Okay. So again, that tells the function which class it belongs to. Okay. So let's implement the rise class. Well, if the plant comes up, that means it's no longer safe. So we'll turn the safety to false. And then um, if it lowers, I will turn the safety to true. Because now if the plant's not up, Mario's safe. And then I have made some little tiny plant pictures. I'm going to go grab them out of notepad. So here is my picture of my plant up. I'm going to grab this so I don't have to do it again. So if it rises, I'm going to print out a picture of the plant. All right. And if it goes down, I'm going to print out a picture of just the pipe with no plant. Back in here. Okay. All right, so now my class functions are all implemented. I'm ready to go test this in my driver. Okay, so here I am. I'm going to include um, piranha.h because I want to get access to my class. Okay, and then um, this is a little bit of a, a weird thing. Since this guy already has a uh, string and io stream in it, don't really have to include those again. Uh, if I do, they have the if and defs in them, so it won't hurt anything. But oh, I'm just not going to bother so that I can make this as simple as possible. And this file also has the username namespace standard, so I don't have to do that again if I don't want to. So let's make main. Oops. Okay. All right, so now I'm ready to instantiate my own class that I made. How exciting. All right, so my type name um, is the name of my class, so I'm going to make a piranha. And um, now I choose a, a variable name, so let's just call it plant1, and I am done. Okay, so when I do this line, I am constructing or instantiating the plant. Um, this line automatically calls my default constructor, so it will call this guy that we defined, and so it's going to set the color to red and the safety status to true. Okay. And then I can call my other functions from the variable. So let's have it rise. Okay. And then um, let's put a little space so we can see the difference. And let's have it lower. Okay. And now I want to see if my functions work. So let's run this thing. Okay, so here is my plant in the up position. That's as a result of calling plant.rise. And here is my pipe in the down condition as a result of calling plant.lower. And that's it. So you can make a much more complicated class that has boatloads more functions and is probably more useful than this. But this is just a little demo to show you how to get started with it. So hopefully that will help you along.